Good afternoon. Hopefully you have uh, gotten some coffee so you can stay awake. My name is Lorena Poland. I'm a tech writer for uh, DataStax. I'm also an Apache committer, one of the first uh, non-coder committers that the Apache Cassandra project got. And um, I've spent about 11 years with Cassandra now. And um, I was supposed to talk about another topic, but I'm going to talk about unified compaction strategy. So this is uh, compaction for all. Go, go to my next slide, there we go. I'll give just a really brief um, reminder of how compaction works in case uh, I have anybody who hasn't had a lot of experience with that. Why you would want to use unified compaction strategy. We'll talk a little bit of the innards of leveling and sharding uh, and improvements that have been made with this compaction strategy. And finally, a comparison to legacy compaction strategies. So today, uh, um, well, I better stick with my, stick with my uh, slides. So Cassandra has a uh, pretty straightforward way that it deals with doing writes. It uh, writes to a commit log so that if you have inter any interruption of service, you can read that commit log back and get any of the writes that uh, might not have getting, gotten written to uh, memory or disk before the, the uh, node went down. It also writes to a mem table. So that's a in-memory storage, um, which is a representation of the table that you're writing. And periodically, depending on uh, hitting a threshold value, the mem table will flush to SS tables that are on disk. Those SS tables are immutable. That's a really big part of the story because you can't overwrite them. Uh, they don't get rewritten. You just get new SS tables when you write new data. Because of that, you run into two problems, um, write amplification and read amplification. So they all st they stem from the same problem, immutable data written to disk. In the case of write amplification, what that means is that you end up, um, you can end up with multiple copies of the same data um, or even outdated data. That data is taking up disk space and um, it has the potential for being rewritten multiple times uh, through the compaction process. With read amplification, you have immutable data written to disk. You could have multiple copies of the same data. When you go to read it, that means you might have to read multiple copies and, um, and try to figure out from those multiple copies what is the valid value that you actually want to return. So you would think, okay, Let's just, uh, you know, we're going to have all this immutable data written to disk. All we have to do is compaction. And everything's good, right? Easy. You know, you take all these values that you find over here on the right and um, compact them down to a simple, re a single record that has the most uh, recent data. And, you know, Bob's your uncle. Well, yeah, you know, you might want to check the box and say done, but it's not that easy. It turns out that you can't really compact all the SS tables. Um, it's extremely slow. It's, it, it's resource restrictive. It's using up memory. It's using up disk. And uh, parts of the data may not need to be compacted. So in fact, what you need to do is that you need to operate on a subset of SS tables. And the question becomes, how do I pick what subset to work on? Today, we have two strategies. Well, um, until a few weeks ago, we, we had two strategies, size tier compaction strategy, or STCS. And in this method, uh, what occurs is that as you get uh, SS tables written to uh, disk, you group them basically by size. So you're looking for SS tables that are approximately the same size. And those uh, SS tables can then be compacted and pushed up a level. So these levels are ways that you can kind of keep SS tables grouped. And this, um, you know, this one works pretty well. It's a pretty simplistic um, way to do compaction. 
But you end up with a few problems. The highest levels um, end up not getting touched because you don't write really huge SS tables all the way up to the top all that often. Um, now you have these really large SS tables up there in the higher levels, which are going to take up a massive amount of space to compact them um, because this technique you, needs double the, the space of what you're compacting in order to do the compaction. And it, it doesn't really care what it has in the SS tables, so you can have overlapping data in an SS table that doesn't, uh, that doesn't get sorted out when it does the compaction. And there is absolutely no, no real parallelism that you can do here. So folks came up with another way, which was um, leveled compaction strategy and said, well, let's give this one a try. Here, what happens is that a uh, SS table is split into similarly sized uh, tables and um, promoted to another level. Uh, what you end up with is a lot of small tables um, uh, uh, as you go from level to level. And um, you can end up with low space. Um, you do have low space overhead to do this because you're splitting them into small pieces. But, um, but you, you may have problems with the, uh, with triggering the compaction. And there's even more parallelism problems here. So to date, people usually use STCS for, uh, uh, my brain just fried. You use, you use STCS for, um, I, I have a 50-50. A, a, <laughs> come on, Patrick, tell me, read or write? <laughs> <laughs> who do I have here who knows about these anyway? <laughs> huh? It's write heavy, yeah. Okay. And um, level compaction strategy is good for, um, for read heavy. So you have to take a pick. You got to pick one or the other. I know these things. I just had my brain go crazy. Yeah. Oh, see, I should have I gone to my next slide. I told myself, write heavy workloads, STCS, read heavy on LCS. Um, there are some problems with this, though. Um, you, it's not really easy to tell. Do you have a write-heavy or read-heavy? What do you have a mixed workload? What are you going to do? Okay. And um, before, you, before UCS, you basically had to pick what you were going to do ahead of time, and you had to set it. And once you had set a compaction strategy, it was hard to change it because you had to do a major or full recompaction, okay, of everything that was there. Um, the other thing was that workloads can change over time. You know, you might have one kind of workload when you start up your, your cluster, but as time goes on, it may turn into um, a different workload than you had. So um, a lot of people have thought uh, long and hard about um, these topics and um, done a lot of research into it. And uh, one of the theories or ideas was about using unified compaction strategy. So here we go, unified compaction strategy to the rescue. Well, UCS is all the things, okay? Basically, you can do size tiered, you can do leveled, or you can do anything in between, all right? Um, and it is... Actually, although it can simulate those older styles, it is actually a new compaction strategy in and of itself, um, which has improved immensely in a number of different ways. And um, uh, what, what is great is that because it can simulate these older, older styles, uh, you can put it into place in your system, even if you've been running, you know, running your system for years and years and years. So you can switch between strategies at any time. Literally, you could just change the values that uh, set the compaction strategy, and, and um, it'll sometimes uh, kick off a comp compaction. But when compaction comes around the next time, it'll switch to the, the new compaction strategy that you would like to be using. The other thing is, is that you can, you can uh, configure the strategy at every level. So you can have a level, you can have a compaction strategy for your L0 level, which is different than your L4 level. And a lot of times 
um, that that's a real advantage, right? You might want to be doing write heavy at a, a low level, but uh, read heavy at a higher level. It reduces the uh, the space overhead dramatically um, by how it works, and uh, as we'll talk about, it you can parallelize. You know, my computer kept saying that wasn't a word, but it just seems like one, doesn't it? You can parallelize the operation so you can get faster, compact, uh, faster completion of your compaction. And um, if, you've ever, if you've ever watched compactions going on, you know, which are just like, you know, can really make you crazy, especially in a production environment, um, you, you'll, you'll be happy of that. Um, lastly, this is a stateless process, so um, it has that advantage as well. Okay, um, I'm gonna hope I didn't, I, I, I had to pick a level of, to, of what to talk about to you guys, and hopefully I picked um, the right mix of, uh, of heavy stuff and not heavy stuff. By the way, the guy who wrote this code is in the room, and if you want to know the heavy details, I'm gonna tell you to talk to him. <laughs> so basically what you can see here is a graph, and um, uh, in one case, you can see if you're at uh, the the bottom uh, the bottom axis is a, a factor we'll call W for the moment, a, sc a scaling parameter. And if you uh, if you go into negative numbers on that scaling parameter, you'll see that uh, that your um, that your read uh, sorry your read amplification is really high and drops as you go to the, to the right, whereas the uh, right amplification is low and goes high to the right. The other way around, yeah, okay. <laughs> the other way around. <laughs> I, I, should, I should get this right. Um, it turns out that this stuff over, is, over here is uh, what you want if you're trying to do uh, writes, and this is what you want if you're trying to do reads, okay. That, that um, there's a whole bunch of words here, okay? Levels are determined by the SS table size. We'll talk, it's not quite size, but that's a good first piece. Um, the per level changes will change as you get a, a higher uh, fan out factor. It turns out that that fan out factor can be uh, devised for either that tiered value where you have a T equals some F value or leveled, if you want this to look like leveled compaction strategy, you could set T equal to uh, two. And that you will get up to T minus one, whatever T is set to, SS tables um, per level at rest. The, uh, the results will move up a level when they, uh, grow, uh, when they grow large enough. Again, I'm using size, you're gonna see in a minute, it's not quite size. And um, and you can you can make the uh, you can make the uh, relationship of F and W um, as you see here in the two qu equations um, for when you have a situation where you have tiered or you have leveled values. So that scaling factor W can be used to basically scale yourself all the way from LCS to a mixed workload to STCS. And um, uh, it turns out that a lot of times it's much easier to relate W to an, a value that tells you something about whether you're, you're meaning to do leveled or tiered. Okay, um, when you set a scaling, when you set scaling parameters, by the way, in, um, in the, the actual configuration, you could use the, the integer values, okay? So for instance, where W equals minus eight is the equivalent uh, to legacy LCS, if that's the kind of behavior you're looking for. Um, and it turns out that that, that setting means that your uh, F value will be 10. So L10 is the equivalent of W equals minus eight. Uh, whereas when W equals two, you have the equivalent of the um, size tiered compaction strategy, the legacy, or T, Four. Neutral is when you're at W equals zero. Because you can set the uh, scaling, par uh, scaling parameters for the levels, 
you can see here that you have the option to set uh, different values for each level. And um, uh, by doing T and L, it, it keeps you kind of in mind which, uh, which strategy you're, you're looking at for each, each level. And um, basically, the last level that you set will be used for all of the, uh, that level and all levels above. So, you know, for instance, I suppose if you wanted to have, you know, um, STCS throughout, you could just set T4 as the scaling parameter, and you'd have T4 at all of the levels. Yes. Yes, thanks, thanks, Brian. Here. Yes, the the uh, the number that's after L and T is the fan out factor. Okay, so so I simplified in a couple of, of uh, slides here that this was size, and in fact that was uh, what was used for the. Um, version one of UCS, but uh, all of you are super lucky that about two or three weeks ago, the version two got, uh, got released in uh, Cassandra 5.0. So if you pull down uh, Cassandra 5.0, there's a beta, um, beta one Docker container, Docker image, if you'd like to use that. It's a handy thing to test with. Uh, what is actually used now is not size, but density, okay? So what density does is that it, and, and the density is computed as the um, size of the input SS table divided by V, which is the fraction of the total token space represented by that SS table. So why do you care about using density instead of a size or a number? Well, if you think about size and number, um, I think you can probably, without too much uh, work, realize that you could get some imbalances, okay? Uh, you might have a whole bunch of tables come in, and now you're having to do a whole bunch of work because you have all these tables and you need to get them moved up, or uh, you have uh, really disparate size um, SS tables come in, and what are you gonna do about that? So the density basically allows you to sort of even that problem out. Um, as the SS tables grow denser, they're likely to move up on the levels, um, but they also control the, the size of the SS tables so that you don't get really large SS tables anywhere in the system. Um, that per density level grows um, by a, um, a, a fan factor, that fan factor again, F, okay, um, which in this case um, uh, needs to be greater than or equal to two so it also understands the progression of data in the LCS and the STCS uh, cases. So, um, so, the, so even though if you're using basically the equivalent of those older legacy styles, you're still getting some advantage from, um, from the, the density calculations. The um, overlap in your data in SS tables um, will allow you to um, uh, get triggers at the, at the correct points if, you're, if you happen to be in a mixed state as well. Okay. So what happens with uh, density and overlap? So density, again, it's the size of the table divided by the token share. Now, this is kind of an interesting thing. Um, when, I was, uh, when I was sort of getting into this and looking at the calculations for how do you get density and and move, you know, move on to some of the additional calculations that are behind all of this. Uh, at one point, I was, I was going over a, a calculation, and I uh, asked Branimir, I was like, I don't understand. How do you get from here to here? And this one, you're dividing by a quarter, and in this one, you don't divide at all. What's going on? Well, um, when, you, when you're promoting into level zero, you're promoting 100% of that token range, <laughs> okay? So my, my fraction was one. That was... Uh, that was kind of, ah, what happened? So um, overlap is, is uh, looking, you only count the overlapping SS tables um, towards uh, threshold. And um, overlap is what usually drives read amplification, right? You have to read from more SS tables if you have a lot of overlap. Um, when compaction is, is uh, going to actually perform, 
Uh, what happens is that you, uh, you lump some of these SS tables together in a bucket. And um, with UCS, what you can do is you can form the, um, the buckets from uh, overlap sections or, or what's, um, what's set as transitively extended. So you can see here, here's three different examples. Um, you might have four uh, SS tables come in, uh, each of which is um, 100 um, maybe bits. <laughs> and, um, and they can be compacted into uh, one large table that, um, that has a density of 400 maybe bits. They could be compacted into um, four tables of 100 maybe bits still, but a density, a higher density. Um, or, in fact, depending on how they get, um, how they get uh, com um, uh, put together uh, and sharded, you could end up with four of them that were slightly different sizes, but um, still have the higher density. So the second part of this magic is uh, sharding, okay? Um, and this is what really leads to the um, parallelization of the compression. So um, uh, you can set token ranges. In the initial uh, build of UCS, that was a, that was a fixed value. So, um, so the sharding was a, a set value. And, um, and as you'll see, there's been a little bit of a, a, a switch to that um, as we go on. But because you can parallelize, now you can, you can sort of deal with each of these verticals um, uh, without uh, concurrently, right? You don't have to have them, uh, they're not dependent on another token range in order to, uh, to be doing the, com the compaction. So uh, um, the, the way that the sharding uh, works is that uh, reasonable breakpoints are found, okay? So you can use reasonable breakpoints um, rather than uh, uh, just making arbitrary breakpoints that might um, end up with a lot of overlap because of how you break them up. And this also means that, uh, that your compaction doesn't have to have the same rate it doesn't have to have the same rate across uh, the token ranges, and it doesn't have to have the same rate on the levels. Ooh, let's get some math. So basically, um, in, in this most basic idea, really there's only two things that, uh, that determine uh, what's going on for sharding. One is a basic shard count. A lot of times that's set to something like four, and uh, a target SS table size. Uh, if you, if you have the situation, and you're using a condition here that uses the density, the uh, base uh, shard count, and that, um, that target SS table size that you're trying to um, reach, and if that value is less than one, then you will shard into that basic number of shards. But, um, but if, it's, if it's larger, and you can see there's a little bit of uh, a calculation here, if you want to read about that in more detail, you can go look at the docs that I wrote. Um, but basically what it does is that it, it uh, means that your shard, the number of shards you're set to is a multiple of two times the base number of, of shards that you set. So when compaction starts, um, the first thing that you need to do is calculate that result density. You use that in the condition to decide how you're going to split uh, the SS tables um, into close to a, a target um, SS table size. And basically what happens is those SS tables kind of get split close, close to the center. It's kind of like between that, that value um, divided, divided by square root of two or that value times the square root of two. And, um, and, uh, and so you can see here in, in this example that if you set the, uh, the size to uh, one gigabyte, you're, uh, you're really not going to have any change in the number of shards or the size of the files um, until you get uh, to that one gigabyte size. And in this particular case, you'll see that it sort of steps up um, in shard count, but the size of the files stay, stay the same.
that was an interesting way to do it, but it turned out that a little bit better way um, had a little bit of a, a more of a nuance here. And that had to do with adding a minimum SS table size and a growth factor. So um, by specifying a minimum SS table size and that growth factor, you could, um, you could affect the shard count as the data set grew. And so the data on each level could be um, evened out a little bit. And you can see that now you have um, one, uh, you have, uh, uh, one shard at a really small size and, and th three more levels based on, uh, based on the math. The one thing I will point out, oop, the one thing I will point out uh, is that you'll see now that growth factor comes into um, the last case, which is where many of the, the, um, the calculations are going to end up with based on the SS table size. And you have a factor of one minus omega, uh, one minus lambda, excuse me, uh, in that, that um, factor that you're doing for how many shards you're going to have. Who thought they were gonna see math today? <laughs> Okay, so here's, here's that case, all right? Um, we still have the um, target size set to one gigabyte. We've set the uh, minimum size to 100, oh, maybe bits, sorry. And, um, and in this particular case, for the, uh, for the, the graphs on the right-hand side, you have your uh, lambda value set to 0.33. You'll see that you, um, you now have, as the, shard, as the shard count grows, you're actually growing the uh, SS table size um, commensurately. So if you use a value for lambda of zero, then the SS tables don't grow. Um, if you use a value of one, the shard count is going to get fixed. And um, it turns out that if you use a lambda of 0.5, you're going to get the shard count and the SS table size growing at the same, same rate. Okay, let's go through an example. So here we're gonna set a base SS table size of uh, 50 um, megabits. We have a scaling factors. You'll notice I have, um, it's tiered at the lower levels and then it switches to uh, leveled compaction. We have a target size of 100, which is twice that uh, base size and we set the base shard count to one. Did I? <laughs> I hope that's right. Okay, so here we go. Compaction, um, we have four, four tables. Compaction is triggered. We calculate the shard count. Uh, you'll notice that we have a density of 400 mebibits with a token range of one or 100%, so we're gonna get four shards. So let's go ahead and write those in. They're each going to have a density of 400 um, mebibits. And we come along, we delete the sources now, okay? We've compacted into new tables. The shard boundaries don't matter now that we're done with compaction. We have a new set of sources come in. So here come some more SS tables. And this time uh, we have them, they're 60 mebibits. That means our density is going to work out to be uh, 240 um, with a token range of one again. So we're gonna end up with two shards of 120 each. Delete the sources, get rid of the shard boundaries, go on. All right, now we've actually hit, we've hit a condition which is going to cause us to do a compaction in L1 because we've set that at tier three, and as you'll see um, over here, um, uh, basically on the, if you just think about the ones that are on the right-hand side, you've already gone over the, that number. So uh, what we're going to do is have to look at the overlap sections that occur between those, uh, between those SS tables. And in this case, you can think of if they're over each other, they have overlap. So it's really easy to see that um, A and E have overlap, B and E have overlap, C and F, and D, F, and G. But D, F, and G are the, what 
actually trigger the threshold here. Okay. So in this particular case, because F is actually involved in, in C as well, we extend the bucket to include C, D, F, and G. Um, and uh, that means that we end up, if you add up all those numbers, you'll have 430 mebibits bits um, in half the space, okay? So uh, we end up with a density of um, 860 mebibits, bits, um, and we're going to have eight shards. If you, did, if you did those calculations, you'd have eight shards. So here we go. Um, we end up with two SS tables that are um, 135, and we end up with two SS tables that are 80. Okay. Remember that could be within um, a, a square root of two factor, smaller or larger. All right, um, and that's in fact what happens here to uh, to get those four into it. And we delete the sources and the shards and the buckets no longer matter. And um, we could continue that, of course, but, um, but I think this is where I finish <laughs> um, that, that example. Um, I just wanted to remind you that the thing that's so important here, for those of you who are operators you know, and are actually running this stuff, that because the strategy is stateless, you can switch at any time to a different target. Um, uh, the work that was already done will be beneficial even to that and that the splitting and the sharding um, is not affected when you cha make changes. So how do these compare? Well, um, with STCS, um, the uh, buckets and levels end up with similarly sized um, SS tables, but um, UCS um, uses a predefined um, band of sizing. Um, so the selection is more stable and predictable Whereas with STCS, you end up with uh, odd selections of buckets and spanning SS tables of wildly different sizes. They, they do have uh, similar triggers, but with that additional um, uh, work that was done, UCS is more efficient about doing it. Um, when there are multiple choices for picking SS buckets within a, a bucket, uh, picking SS tables within a bucket, STCS will always group by size, but uh, UCS will group by uh, timestamp, which can have some advantages. And um, UCS uh, efficiently tracks the, uh, the time order and whole um, table expiration, which STCS doesn't, uh, which by the way, there's, there's actually people who have been experimenting with using um, unified compaction strategy for uh, time-windowed compaction strategy as well. For leveled um, compaction strategy, they end up with a very uh, similar effect, as I said, but, um, but, the, um, but in unified compaction strategy, the SS tables are structured such that they can easily be switched to uh, tiered. Um, oh, tiered uh, US, yeah. To the, to the UCS flavor of tiered um, and changed with different parameters. And um, whereas the LCS SS tables are based on size only, um, the SS tables uh, in UCS um, can uh, uh, handle the problem of space amplification by sharding on specific token boundaries. Um, LCS uh, splits SS tables based on a uh, fixed size with boundaries that are usually following uh, outside SS tables on the next level, which kick off compaction more, uh, more commonly. And unified compaction strategy aids with much tighter write amplification control. So uh, really, UCS ends up using sort of a combination of both of those techniques but does it in such a way that it is uh, much more effective uh, for you and uses less resources. That's really the, the important part. You know, you don't get to say this too often about Cassandra, about an upgrade, all right? Uh, I got any up, anybody who's ever upgraded from one to another? Um, <laughs> but in this particular case, it really is easy. All you need to do is go in and change the, uh, the factors in, um, in the uh, uh, Cassandra YAML and 
you got to change. Okay. The factors that you are changing are the scaling parameters, target uh, SS table size, minimum SS table size, base shard count. I can't believe I have a typo, and SS table growth. And uh, uh, I, I can tell you there is way more detail, like I said, if you want to go look at the docs um, uh, about this topic. So thank you very much. I hope that that gave you some idea about how to use it. <laughs> do, do I get at least a, a B, Branamir? <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have any questions? No? Has anybody tried it? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, to uh, migrate your actual cluster to 5.0 from, say, 4 or 3 or something? Or? Well, you do have to be using 5.0 to get this compaction strategy. That's where it's introduced. Yeah. Good answer. When you're testing, always try one node, then do the rest. Has anybody tried UCS? Yeah? And what do you guys think so far? It was working slightly better than I'll say it. Mm hmm Okay. The numbers. Right. Right. So, right. So, so just to, to reiterate, um, to summarize, basically, it, it wasn't uh, difficult to change from LCS to UCS. It was a little bit better. Uh, they wish they had some um, sort of auto uh, ranging to set, and I know that that's been talked about as a, a, a future uh, enhancement to this. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Answers for tombstones. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. Okay, well, thank you all for coming today. Mm -hmm.